Hello and welcome back to 5 Minute Materials. Today we're going to be talking about parallax decals, POM decals, decals POM. We're also going to be covering bump offset in decals because it's notoriously difficult. So as you can see here, our end result is a decal that has some beautiful parallax effects. Uh, you can imagine this is probably useful for like, you know, bullet impacts, some like crazy effects where like the earth is like caving in and it's like a portal to another dimension or some shit. Essentially just whatever you can do with a parallax occlusion mapped texture, uh, but in the form of a decal. This is sort of a continuation from several other videos, particularly the decals video and also the parallax occlusion mapping video and also the bump offset video. So if you're not super familiar with any of them, then this video isn't really going to mean much to you. So let's go over why this is sort of difficult. You can see that I have a custom function called Priz Parallax Occlusion Decal. If we were to just use the regular occlusion mapping, and we just, you know, copied all of the inputs into this one. And then we got our shadow and our parallax UVs and we hit save. Then you will notice that uh, something weird is happening with our decals. Uh, it's an absolute nightmare. On the top, uh, our decal isn't too bad. It looks pretty much just standard as we would expect. Uh, however, when we start to rotate it in particular directions, you can see that it's just not, it's just not happy. Uh, now the reason for this is that the standard parallax occlusion material function operates in tangent space. Uh, however, with a decal, it's outputting its normal in world space to be read by you know, the, uh, the material underneath it. Basically when it's rotated like this, it just gets all messed up. And the same goes for like being down here. Even if we rotated this in any direction, I think it would just be completely messed up. If you've tried doing parallax decals, this is probably where you've ended up. Uh, if you've decided to watch this video and I'm going to teach you how to rectify it. So the first thing that we want to do is find the parallax occlusion mapping function. We're going to hit browse. We're going to find it in the engine material functions. We're also going to go to our second content browser. If you don't have one, you can go to window. You can go to content browser and open up a second or third content browser and then just grab it by the tab and just yeet it into here. Uh, and then you can just have two of them open. So what we're going to do is go to whatever folder you want to chuck this in. Uh, I'm going to go to my dump folder, decal parallax video. We're going to drag this into here. We're going to copy it. Very important. You copy it into here and then just rename this, you know, POM that doesn't suck. And then we open it up and you can see we've got the standard old bloody, you know, absolute spaghetti monster that is the parallax occlusion mapping function. However, we can make changes to this one that aren't going to like destroy everything. So what we need to do in our new parallax occlusion mapping that doesn't suck function is we need to essentially change what the camera vector is. Uh, and if you do want to use the, you know, the shadow uh, rendering in the POM, then you'll also need to change what the light vector is. Where are you? Hello? Here it is, light vector, bam. So the easiest way to do this is to get out camera vector. Let's just copy paste it here. Then we're gonna use a function called inverse transform matrix. The vector to transform is gonna be the camera vector. And then I'm just going to copy paste this from the other one, but you can just, you know, look at it. Uh, we're going to get our negative X vector 
We're going to transform it from local to world space. We're going to get our positive Y vector, transform it from local to world space. We're going to get our positive Z vector and transform it from local to world space. Uh, now this bit's a bit confusing. We're going to put our X vector into the Z. We're going to put our Y vector into the Y and we're going to put our Z vector into the X. Then the transformed camera vector, we are going to save this as a named reroute node. We're going to call this custom camera vector. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to recall custom camera vector and any place that we find camera vector, we're just going to yeet this motherfucker into it. So we're just going to copy paste that, chuck that in there, put this there. We're gonna copy paste it. We're gonna just, uh, I swear there's one over here somewhere. Camera vector. Um, also feel free to, you know, if there's like a bunch of outputs that you're not really using, you can just like get rid of them. But let's just be pretty thorough. Pretty sure that's all of them. Oh, no, nope. hold on. There we go. All right, and then if we did want to use the shadows, we would just do the same thing, but we would be transforming. I'm just going to copy paste this so it's easier. We're just going to transform the incoming light vector and then just put that into, I think it only appears in one place. So we're just going to chuck that in there. Um, even if you copy paste this, it's just going to optimize it all into one call. So don't, don't worry about having repeated nodes and stuff. The compiler is quite smart. So we just hit save. We can go into our material. We're gonna go to this. And we should be able to just look up POM that doesn't suck and the nodes should all line up because they're, yep, by name. Then we're just gonna hit save. And bam, it, if, I didn't actually expect that to work first go. But you can see that we now have our parallax occlusion mapped decals and as the material function name would suggest, it doesn't suck. So as you can see, we can rotate this around and the parallax looks fantastic. And you can see that these ones down here look great. And if we got the shadow output and multiplied our resulting color by that shadow output, then you would see that we need to invert our light vector. You could do this inside the material function, but it can kind of get a little bit confusing. So let's just eat that into there. All right. So now you can see, aside from I've got different colors in here now, um, you can see that we have the, the fake shadows that we covered in the parallax occlusion video. Uh, this also is accurate when, you know, they are on the sides of things. As for the actual sort of masking that I'm doing in this material, I'll just run you through it real quick. We're essentially just getting the resulting texture and we're doing a height lerp. So if you don't know what a height lerp is, check out my height lerp video. We're chucking a bit of contrast on it and then we're putting that into the opacity of the decal output. Uh, and that's how it kind of you know, looks like it starts over here a little bit and then it gets stronger and stronger into the middle. Another little trick I'm doing is getting a radial gradient. So that's like a gradient from the center of the, the decal to the outside. Um, and I'm actually using that to change the reference plane of the decal. What the reference plane is, is just where the sort of midpoint of the parallax effect should be. So if it's zero, then it will be only going up. If it's one, then it will only be going down. And if it's 0 0.5, uh, it's kind of a mixture of up and down. So 0 0.5 is the default. But what I'm doing is taking that 0 0.5 and then adding part of this radial gradient to it. And so essentially what that's doing is it's just like bulging it downwards, but only in the center, not, you know, around the outside. Uh, so that can just kind of make it look like it's really like a bowl. So we've covered parallax occlusion mapped decals, but what if we wanted to use bump offset for the decals? What if we want to just like a cheap 
but less sort of fidelitous result. What we could do is we could use the bump offset advanced node. So regular bump offset is this. Bump offset advanced is just, it, it's literally the same thing, but it's just like manually done. So if you wanted to know how bump offset works under the hood, this is it. What we need to do is instead of just camera vector being the default, we just need to do that trick from before where we get our, our vectors, we transform the camera vector by it, and that goes into the camera vector. Everything else can just be the default. You know, it's basically the same as the, uh, the bump offset stuff. And we just get the UVs. We can smack that into our texture sample. And now you can see that we have our bump offset effect, which again, doesn't look as good as parallax occlusion. It's best used subtly, but it is better than nothing. And again, we would have run into issues with, you know, rotation and having things on the side of, you know, walls and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, we would have run into the same issues with bump offset as we did with parallax occlusion mapping from earlier. So there you go. That's how we can fix parallax occlusion mapping and bump offset within decals. Keep in mind, you can also combine this with the, the debuffer decals for some very interesting effects. I guess you can experiment and find out what works best for you, uh, for your given situation. So I hope that you learned something. I hope that this fixed a few little issues for you. If you did enjoy it, make sure that you are liked and subscribed. How do I outro again? If you do want to support the channel monetarily, you can do so for as little as $1 per month in the Patreon, which is linked below, or you can buy my Prismatoscape Interaction GPU Fluid Sim plugin for $34.99 from the Epic Marketplace. I'll chuck a link in the description. And with that, we say goodbye. Goodbye.